In this video, you will learn how to set up your first dynamic template. Welcome back to the channel, it's Sofian here. I'm a DocuSign expert who helps businesses with their digital transformation. And today, you will learn how to set up your first dynamic template. Now, really quickly, for those of you who haven't been watching the previous video where I explained the difference between a static and a dynamic document, if two customers are purchasing the same service, they'll most likely be filling out the exact same form. That's when we talk about a static document. On the other hand, if you're sending a letter of offer to two different candidates, the layout will remain the same, but the information will change. And that's when you need to set up a dynamic DocuSign template. When trying to use DocuSign on dynamic documents, most people make the same mistake. They'll start correctly by setting up a template with a blank version, but then they'll try to send an envelope using the template. That sounds about right, doesn't it? By doing this, you're sending the document that's actually saved in the template, which is the blank one. Doesn't look really good. So the problem here is that you're trying to use the template when you should apply the template to overlay it on top of the document that you're uploading to DocuSign. So here's the rule. For a dynamic document, you need to apply the template. For a static document, you can use the template. So now, how do we apply templates? I'll show you step by step. All right, so let's say that I'm a HR manager and I want to send a letter of offer to a candidate. So the first thing I need will be a blank letter of offer word template. So here's the one that I use. And as you can see, it doesn't contain any one information. Everything that's highlighted in yellow needs to change. So once we've got that, we can start creating the template in DocuSign. So let's go template, new, and create a template. The first thing is to give a name to our template. So I'm just gonna call this one letter of offer. Now I'm gonna upload my word letter of offer document template, which is here. Now I'm gonna add the workflow. So I want the candidates to sign first, then being the hiring manager, I want to sign as well. And I also want the payroll team to be notified that the candidates have accepted the offer so that they can send them the paperwork um, related to their pay and um, retirement and all of that. Because I want the candidate to sign first, I'm gonna tick the box set signing order and that's the first recipient that I'm gonna add. I don't need the name and email, I'm just gonna place a placeholder in the template. So candidate, the action needs to sign is correct. The second recipient will be myself, being the HR manager in our example, and the action needs to sign is correct as well. And lastly, I'm gonna add my colleague Sophie from the payroll team. And I'm also gonna change the action from needs to sign to receives a copy. Great, so now let's customize the email subject and message. I want to make this a little prettier for my candidates, so I'm gonna change this to a please docusign your letter of offer. Now, because I only want the candidate to see that message, I'm gonna change this to custom email and language for each recipient. Now, because I'm the HR manager and I receive a ton of emails, um, I wanna be able to see from my inbox who I'm about to countersign the letter of offer for. To do this, I can actually insert the name of the candidate in the email subject. Go here and insert the candidate's name. And I've also changed the email subject to well done, candidate X has accepted the offer, countersign ASAP. Now let's do the same with payroll. And there you go, so please send onboarding paperwork to your new colleague, candidate name, please do this ASAP. Now let's add the fields on our document. Now here's my letter of offer, I can scroll down until I reach the acceptance part, which is where I need to add the field um, for my candidate and myself to act on. As you can see, I've got the candidate selected just here, which means that the field will be assigned to the candidate and I can toggle between recipient. It doesn't matter by who you're starting uh, by, but I like to start in the actual signing order. Um, and because the candidate is signing first, I'm gonna start by the candidate. So for the acceptance part, I need a signature, the full name and the date of both the candidate and myself. So I'm gonna start by dragging a signature field. Then I'm gonna add their name and then the date. And I'm gonna drag over, select all three of them and align them against the left. And I'm just gonna use Control or Command D depending on if you're using Mac or PC to copy and paste the field and I'm gonna place them here. and change the ownership to myself. Now, before we save, we also wanna make sure that the fields are always going to be positioned correctly. 
Since we're using a dynamic document, there will be times where fields will actually be too high or too low, and they'll always be missing the actual um, lines just right here. The feature that we um, want to use for this is called Auto Place. Auto Place tells DocuSign that fields need to stay close to a certain word or string of words. To use that feature, just click on a field and go to location and then setup. Now you need to pick a string of words that's uniquely present on the document, otherwise DocuSign will copy that field next to each instance of the word or of the string of words that you chose. For example, if we choose the word the, we've got seven fields that were automatically placed. So let's start again using something unique. Let's pick the word handbook, for example. There's no other instance of handbook here, so we can just use that word. Let's go location, setup. Okay, so now DocuSign has automatically placed the field on the actual word. So we're just gonna drag this to where we actually want it. So now DocuSign will remember that this field needs to be um, 128 pixels from the left and 549 from the top. And now the fun part is that we need to do this for all our fields individually. We can't select um, multiple fields and do it all at the same time. Otherwise, it would be too easy, right? Now, one thing to bear in mind is that when you're setting up autoplace, try to pick a word that is as close as possible to the actual field you're trying to set up autoplace on. Because if you need to add a line here, for example, um, what will happen essentially is all of this will get pushed down, even though handbook hasn't moved, then the distance between the handbook and the actual field that are right here won't be um, correct anymore. So you'll have a misalignment. And that's why I actually recommend that you use anchor text in your Word document. So what is anchor text? Well, what we can do is we can just place a word just right here because we know that nothing will ever change. The space will never change between uh, this line and the actual field and just write whatever we want. Okay, it doesn't have to make any sense because what we're gonna do is we're gonna hide it by making it white. And then you can just use that text that you've just entered in your um, Word template and use the auto place on that one. And if you realize this halfway through after you've already uploaded your Word document, don't worry because you can go back and replace the actual Word document that, your, um, that now contains the anchor text without losing the workflow and all the fields. And there's also a third way to use um, anchor text. So DocuSign already comes with default automatic anchor text that you can use in your um, documents. So for example, if we want to add a signature field for the first recipient of the envelope, so don't forget to set a signing order in your, in your template, otherwise that won't work. If we want to add that signature field for our first recipient, we can just use forward slash S1 and we can just do the same thing. Just place it here, for example. And if we want to add the date, we can just use forward slash D1. Okay, so now to test the template, I've included some information about a candidate, including the name, address, um, position title, salary. And I've also added a couple of extra lines by um, adding a picture here. So you can see that the acceptance part has now moved to the second page. Okay, so now let's just save this so we can test it in DocuSign. Now let's go back to DocuSign. And the mistake that everybody makes is going to template. That's not what you wanna do. You want to initiate the sending process the same way you would send an envelope. And don't click on use a template here either. I know that's confusing. Just click on send an envelope. And now let's upload our test letter. And DocuSign has found a match. So let's just click on apply. Now, if you follow those steps and DocuSign hasn't found a match, just relax. You can still apply one manually. Click on apply templates, browse, then select the template and click on apply. So if you didn't get a match, it might be because the first or last 25 characters of your document don't match what you've got in the template. So what you wanna do is go to your um, Word template and place something in the header. And you can also hide this uh, by making it white. You need to make sure that the string of word 
is present in both the documents saved in the template as well as in the document that you're going to be uploading um, moving forward. And there you go, your DocuSign account will actually match this against the template moving forward, um, but no one will be able to see that this information is present on the document. And that's it, we've overlaid the template, but we kept the actual document with all the information that we've added um, for that specific recipient. So now let's just double check that all our fields are in the right spot. I'm just gonna add myself and click on next. And as you can see, the acceptance part is now on the second page and all our fields are exactly where we want them to be. Awesome, so we can now send the envelope. Now let's see what the envelope actually looks like um, in the candidate's inbox. Okay, so we can see that the candidate has um, received a custom message, so that's great. Let's just click on review documents. So we are now initiating the signing process as the candidate. Let's click continue and start, sign and finish. Now the HR manager will receive an email from DocuSign asking them to sign as well. So let's see what that looks like. Oh, well done, Sofian has accepted the offer. Great, countersign ASAP. Review document, continue, start, sign, finish. And now everyone should have received an email notification with the actual signed version of the offer of employment. And here is the finalized document. Payroll will also receive that agreement. And if you wonder why my name appears here twice, it's because I've used it for both the candidate and the HR manager role um, in the actual envelope. But there you go, this is how you set up dynamic templates and overlay them on your documents. In the next lesson, I'll show you how to send envelopes in bulk using Mail Merge. If you need more help with DocuSign, you can explore my consulting options using the link in the description of this video. Thanks for watching this video. If there's anything I can clarify for you, please just leave me a comment. And if you did learn something today, I hope you can give this video a thumbs up. And if you wanna be notified of the next ones, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next lesson.